dispute of bonus campaigns. Who wins and who loses? Uh, hello, my name is Simon Eaton. Um, I've been in online gaming for 20 years. I've been in Asia for seven of those 20 years. And I'm an online like marketing consultant, uh, work with several brands. And that's, that's me. I would like to introduce everyone else. Start with you. Hi, my name is Mike Portanier. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Wikibet, a new online casino. I work specifically in casino, a bit of sports book and esports as well. And uh, I'm, I'm quite a fan of the esports industry, so uh, I'm hoping to hear more from this topic. It's looking good. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. My name is Chris Nikolopoulos. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer in Betby. I've been uh, working in night gaming for the last 15 years, and for the last five, I'm uh, together with the Betby team. My workflow, my, my know-how focuses on iGaming workflows mainly, legislation, operations, and business development. Thank you for uh, being here. Good morning. Uh, I'm Thomas Golding. I've worked in the industry now for the last 12 years. Background in marketing and operations. I'm currently the CEO of OKBet, one of the largest operators regulated domestically here in the Philippines. And thank you for everyone for joining us and look forward to discussing with the fellow panel. Hi everyone, my name is Dipanchal. I've been active in the iGaming industry in India for like nine years. It has been a great experience when it comes to India and it's a very uh, tough market to be in, but it's a lovely industry to be there. And I'm trying my best to help you out with all your queries and everything that you would want to know about that same market. Okay, thank you. Um, what we're going to be discussing is the uh, importance of bonuses, especially in the sports arena. Some sports books do not offer bonuses. A lot of them do because without bonuses, you can't acquire the players. Um, the reason that some don't is they want to offer better odds, better lines, and use the funding in a different manner. And starting off, um, I know in India, um, it's incredibly important to have bonuses. Without bonuses, you have no players. Yes, yeah, so coming to the Indian market, when it comes to bonuses, that's the first thing that attracts the user. The bigger the bonus numbers, the bigger the numbers of players converting on the brand itself. Uh, I don't see any brand which will be there without the bonuses to start with in the first place. And I don't even know any person who would first see the wagering requirements of any bonuses in uh, any sports book. They would just go, they would see the number and they would register and deposit the money in the first place. So I think for the Indian market right now, it's not that mature that you can go up around without the bonuses. So it's a very necessary thing to be there. Um, I've actually found one brand, uh, Pinnacle. They do not offer bonuses in Asia or when they operate in the US. All the bonuses offered were incredibly low. Um, and the reason is they could offer more competitive odds and now get, get a sports gambler. But the market is changing. We are getting more influencers involved. We are getting more brand ambassadors involved and it's becoming more of a marketing uh, driven task really um for the players rather than the players were before based on the numbers that that's what i found um how do you find out uh, sure. Wikibet? so um uh, with Wikibet, we do offer bonuses and we're working on uh towards different situations of loyalty schemes uh, similar to pinnacle i'm a big fan of uh, stake.com they do a brilliant uh, breakback system a vip system and i think for a younger generation maybe even the crypto generation to a certain extent um, it offers people a way to get in and not be locked behind a bonus. And I think that's not really uh, what everyone's choice is in a, in a younger generation. We have people who are maybe not even happy to take mortgages or like loans for cars now. So why would we do that for a bonus? Um, and I think Stake's done a really good job of that, giving like an opportunity, an easy opportunity for people to come in and uh, not have to worry about, okay, I've taken a bonus and, and now I'm in a playthrough and not really know, can I withdraw, just have a go? Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, so yeah, I quite like that model. I think it's quite open, and I think uh, I think it could be worked upon further and just give give people freer, easier options to get into get into things. Maybe not just always rely on how big, how much are they going to get, and then locking them into wagering. And what about uh, OK bets? Yeah, I think for us in the regulated market here in the Philippines, we there's some slight nuances I think for us because. In terms of the taxation with, 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 with PACCOR, we have to take that into, into account. So we don't really focus pretty much on acquisition bonuses. It's focused predominantly on, on the retention side. And uh, I agree with what um, Max says in terms of, you know, stake and others like BC Game, particularly those in the crypto space. Over the last few years, I think they've, you know, revolutionized the approach to, towards bonuses in a way 
Um, and we're not looking to, to, to replicate that, but our bonuses are pretty much predicated on, on the retention side of things, you know, enacting a loyalty program, <clears throat> really focusing on uh, the existing user behavior um, as opposed to uh, a real push on, on FDD bonuses. Okay, excellent. What about um, in your band then? Well, I think we all agree that uh, when we're talking about acquisition and uh, bonuses, we're not talking about one market. Every market is different, right? Uh, as the previous guy said, um, there are certain markets with, uh, without the bonuses, you cannot really have an effective acquisition campaign. Uh, however, I feel that uh, when we are talking for uh, more established markets and more regulated markets, acquisition bonuses is not that necessary as in what we call non-locally regulated territories. Yeah, In these territories, there are a lot of operators which do not really specialized that much, do not offer something really pioneer in terms of product sometimes, right? So they are trying to acquire mass number of users by offering a lot of bonuses, uh, which is um, something that we don't see that much in some regulated and more established markets. And when, when you're offering bonuses, you've got to be incredibly careful that players can use that for their advantage, of course, and uh, scam you out of uh, money as an operator. So what's been added is the all over requirements. So the amount of money you've got to bet before you can actually catch out your winnings is it could be anywhere from 20 times, even up to 50 times, depending. Uh, we were discussing earlier it was like 35 uh, times uh, your bonus and um, deposit amount uh, before you can actually withdraw the money. Um, how how is it in a, obviously on the Filipino market um, in OK bet? Um, <clears throat> our, our bonuses is a cost of cost of sales essentially as a portion of GGR is, is, is remarkably low compared to my experience in, in other regulated markets. There's definitely not um, a heavy reliance from a player's perspective um, on, the, on, the, on the bonuses. Um, you know, it's a strategic decision for us uh, not to focus heavily on the bonuses. Um, in terms of bonus abuse that you would see in, in other markets, in terms of, um, in terms of all of the rollover requirements, um, we don't really tend to see that as much, and I think it's a, personally, I think it's a good thing because I, I think a lot of players you know, can be disincentivized by the huge rollover requirements. And yeah, I'm I'm not personally a fan of those type of bonuses. So uh, I'm glad that we can avoid that. In uh, in the Filipino market, like, it's much lower deposit than some of the other markets out there, so the bonus is going to be a lower amount. So it's going to be insignificant to the player. In some markets, it could be a very a huge amount of money you've got to roll over before you can withdraw your money, making it very, very difficult to keep the player, especially if they're, they're going to lose the streak. Yeah. So, anyone like to add to that? So, I have a bit of an interesting take on that. Um, I'm also looking at bonuses as if you just literally take the word bonus, it's just, it's just extra. It's just something to get a player involved or to keep a player. Um, as, as Thomas has said, for retention, it's incredibly important. Um, in previous experiences, working at previous casinos, uh, working towards the Japanese market, for example, um, we had this whole thing of, okay, we have like a regular welcome bonus. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing special, but like a retention of players or like a bonus of players is we'd send them Kobe beef. And for some reason, they love it. It's great. It gives a reality. It's, you know, it gives people like an, a reason to come. They feel like, okay, this is a fiscal product. Like we can, we can trust this casino more. Uh, so yeah, the typical bonus was something like, uh, I don't know, 555%, whatever, um, and then here's some Kobe beef. Like it was a bit of a bit of a crazy idea, but it seemed to seemed to work very well. I've got a, a great guy who handles the whole of the East, and uh, yeah, we love we love that stuff. Yeah, when you're dealing with Asia, when you're dealing with uh, like brands of China, Thailand, Vietnam, all these countries, you offer a bonus based on numbers like 188% or 88% or something like that, just uh, because of the eight. A been a very lucky number. Um, but when you're dealing, obviously, with the other markets and other areas like in Europe or in, in, in America, it's like 100%, 150%. So a lot of the bonuses is down to number one and how lucky the player is going to feel about getting them. And um, I'm not sure how it works with um, OK Bets because I've never checked your website out, uh, but I guess it's very similar. That like you, you choose a bonus percentage or the number mentioned very, very carefully. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you have to be extremely careful when we're talking you know, extremely fine margins anyway. I think most, say if you take sports, for example, here in the Philippines, slightly different to other Asian markets where basketball drives the vast majority of the, the turnover. I think we're most times looking at 80% plus of the engagement across basketball. So things like rebates, you know, cash back on, on, 
on, on that is probably the most prevalent. Okay, we'll be talking about the acquisition bonuses. When now you've got to keep the players on board. There's a couple of ways. One is a reload bonus, so you give them another bonus when they place another deposit. Number one is rebates, which I, I like the rebates cashbacks because it keeps the player there. Um, there's a couple of different methods you use and bonuses to um, retain a player. Uh, would like to discuss that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We run a sport group software, and uh, for us, uh, it's uh, much more um, interesting. This type of bonus, the retention type of bonus that you just mentioned, uh, Simon, compared to the acquisition ones. We can say deposit type of bonus mostly, right? Um, the thing is that uh, when you run some type of retention type of bonus, like a cashback or some kind of free bet or some kind of campaign, you need to personalize it. Uh, you cannot have one approach that works for all the users, yeah? You have, um, in, in modern sports betting, a, a big part not only about risk management, but also profiling the users is understanding your audience. And uh, not the, all the users want the same thing. Not all the users uh, are going to be intrigued by the same amount of uh, free bet, for instance, for example. Uh, in our experience, when a campaign is repeating itself with a couple of weeks or on a monthly period, it works much, much, much better, obviously, on a retention level. And we have some data we have analyzed. Um, and when, when we run campaigns, it's important, you know, to analyze the data again and again uh, in order to figure out what should the average bet be. How, what time of the day should you give this, uh, this free bet to your users? We know, for example, that uh, from the moment we issue a campaign, either in a newsletter and we inform the, the player in a newsletter or some push notification or whatever, within 50 minutes, 80% approximately will use this free bet, you know? Um, so if you don't look at data like that, or data, for example, like the average free bet, in order to intrigue the user, should be approximately 50% higher than his average bet, uh, things like that, you, you are not going to succeed on your retention campaign. You'd like to add something? I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty interested in working on the free bet situation, but uh, I think it's still a model which I personally see um, people, people who I know who are sports bettors, for example, they couldn't tell you what, what happened to the free bet. They're like, okay, I get some money, and then I play, and then I, let's say I win. It's like, okay, cool. It's just like they don't know, they don't get the wagering, they don't get the what you're being locked into or something. So it's just like a case of people will come and then you're hoping that they just kind of play through and play through enough on their own and then just maybe come to withdraw. You can get, okay, now you can get 30% of it out, for example. Um, so I, I still am a little bit um, hesitant to like push towards uh, free bets. Personally, I like the idea of break back. Um, I like the idea of just a, a bit of an easy thing. It's like, here's your money, you can play, you can do what you want. Um, and uh, and just be just be free with it. If you win, cool, great. Okay, there we go. And if you don't, there's there's betting. Okay, um, I'm very interested in the Indian market because it's a real uh, emerging market. It's very very bonus driven. They always want to get something. How does it work? You were mentioning earlier about to me about rebates, uh, yes, wake so, back. And right. So the best part there is that there are free bets which people come and give. <laughs> Tricky situation, right? So they come with uh, free bets. Uh, the initial part is to get the players on board with welcome bonuses, which are not given at once. So the whole welcome uh, package is distributed upon weeks and the amount of uh, activity that the user does. So for instance, he comes, he gets 25% of his bonus the moment he deposits the money, the next 25% when he does the second deposit. So it's distributed across, across the journey there. So it makes more sense for them to use it in a way wherein they don't abuse it in the first go and they do not place very high uh, limit bets so that both are safe in the one place. The second thing is that during the cricket season, which is very much uh, active in India, uh, they give free bets to users, which are wagering free. So these kind of uh, free bets actually realizes the person that, okay, I'm already signed up with this account. I just need to go get active there. And the timing is the tricky part. They're just like my friend said that, you know, at what time you send this message is very important because if the guy is occupied with something else, he's not going to stop that work and go and place the bet. But if he's free, you know what kind of time he usually plays and you send that activity at that point of time, he'll quickly come there, deposit the money and just, you know, take that free bet and then start putting in the money more and more. So I think that's a vicious circle which keeps on going in the Indian market there. When, when you offer free bets before the start of an IPL season or something like that, is it a very low amount you offer or is it could yes. be quite high for some of the players? No, the, free bets, the free bets actually are for the lower account, uh, lower amount because the idea is to get him on board again and not with the idea that he should start playing with higher number of bets. Uh, yes, 
it also depends on the part if that the player is a vip player then obviously these free bets doesn't work for him you have to come up with something which is very exciting for him and just like free bets we also have the uh, culture of giving free spins on certain slots those slots is not a very huge market for india but still people prefer having something for free it's like something which we admire okay fine it's free let's go and try it out yeah excellent and obviously on the filipino market do you offer free bets uh, no there's not free bets really it's uh, as i alluded to earlier mainly around you know rebates cash back based on uh, existing behaviors um free spins not so much the filipino market is very much predicated on volume um you know there tend to be lower value players there's less reliance on you know vips and higher profile segments compared to some other markets as well so yeah pretty much user uh data driven based on you know their existing behaviors um and as opposed to a kind of overall holistic approach excellent and also on on your market as well yeah of course um we, we don't have one market we're working all over the world so we can compare actually different markets but um what i would like to say because i think we covered the free bit more or less uh, another type of bonusing that i see winning more and more users is um kind of leaderboard uh, kind of uh, ranking system where uh, players especially in markets with no high average bets i see that working very well in this type of markets india for example could be one of these markets right um establishing a leaderboard some rankings automatically updated and uh, users anyway bet go go along with their behavior and uh, you just give some fixed prizes it could be some uh, free bet as well but it could be some money or it could be some uh, gift uh, and we see that uh, giving a very good conversion actually excellent and for wikibet what's your take on free bets so um apart from previous I don't quite offer them i think is um something which uh i'm curious about let me let me just for the people who are interested in esports here I, i think it's a good idea to give a mention for that so um esports obviously is still pretty new i don't think anybody has properly clocked the market yet with all due respect um still uh something which we're yet to kind of understand we do have like a younger generation obviously playing um trying to get them involved is kind of tough especially with see like sports betting is sometimes a wild card let's say we have I don't know like we have MMA we have Conor McGregor it's an incredibly watched sport but then it's just not really bet on so uh, how that will go for esports I think we have like an, another couple of years to tell and find out um I think that maybe uh, with these guys uh, you, you could consider like maybe dropping something like a like something like a traditional bonus and then offering them something which is uh, more related to them uh, I'm building an esports product uh, as a bit of a side thing and um we're considering offering anything like CS:GO skins um as as your as re- reward or, or as your like as your entry uh, acquisition tool uh, things like that these things could be easily worked into um you i don't think it's just as as simple as now we have this is sports betting this is the free bet this is how how it works it's like there are many many other things which we can consider giving to people it's not it's not so in my mind it it doesn't need to be so stuck in this box like we could we could open up a bit so yeah excellent thanks uh, yeah esports is definitely an emerging market um, i know a few, only a few of us have added it um but it's definitely something to look at um on on the other side when you're doing bonuses it's very important as an op- from an operator standpoint that you don't just offer a bonus without having a proper market intelligence behind it you must do the numbers you must say was this bonus successful and did it did it make profit at the end of the day um otherwise you may think you're doing a great job you offer all these bonuses the acquisition numbers are up but when you do the number crunching you made a massive loss after six months for the company so every bonus offered has got to be um tagged uh, to the player and you must do your market intelligence or you're not doing yourself any favors so and i think you'd like to add um a, specifically about rebates um cashback and rebates are different than the free bets um cashback is you're getting percentage based back in your um net turnover or on your losses uh it's something that i like because that person would have walked away suddenly has some extra money in their account so they have a reason to come back um what's your take on or i know we've got many different markets so starting on the indian side what would you take on that i think uh you you have to understand that india is flooded with books right now okay you can just go and 
play with one brand and then go again and take the bonus from other brand and keep doing it. But these free bets, when a person loses, it gives them the hope that okay, now I have to play it again and I'll get it something next time. So that small amount which he gets back, he is motivating him to keep on playing with the brand again and again. I think therein the losses are less because you would have spent so much of money to retain that user, send him so much SMS, so much uh, efforts to get him on board. And with a market which is not yet open for SMS and these services, these free bits actually work as a trick for people a lot, a lot many times. Uh, but at the same time, when we talk about the bonuses, there is a huge amount of frauds which happen in the market wherein people just come, they open multiple accounts, they try to take the bonuses and then they play on tables wherein they put different odds on different roulet uh, chips with those bonuses. So I think that's the trickier part because therein we see that people are making losses. Excellent. And do you do any cashback for the Filipino market or rebates? Uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, rebates mainly, as I said earlier, on, on basketball. We don't have the trouble of, you know, lots of multiple accounts, um, mainly because I would say that the requirements from the regulator here are extremely strict in terms of, um, you know, the KYC. So it's quite difficult for a player to circumvent that. So one of the big things um, for us you know, particularly on basketball, it's encouraging that, you know, repeat login week on week, keeping them engaged. And yeah, it's probably one of our key retention tools. Excellent. Um, anything to add? For us as a software provider uh, working in different markets, uh, we can really see the difference between the markets. As Thomas said, Filipino market, hard KYC, hard to find uh, bonus up users. Indian market so much different, right? Uh, it's a different world. So essentially, any type of bonus campaign, no matter if it's a cashback or a some other kind of free bed or some deposit bonus costs some money, right? So it needs to be treated carefully. Uh, results need to be analyzed. Uh, and of course, uh, you cannot uh, afford doing the same mistakes again and again, right? Excellent. Uh, please add on your side about the rebates. Sure. Advice. So um, with you being a software provider as well, uh, sorry, excuse me, a software provider. So I believe that there's like a, a good, a good area here for like automation may be able to help you cut losses straight away. Um, currently I have a system where I'm like, okay, well, if, if I'm going up or down percentage too much, I can just easily just have it automatically stop flows, automation, things like this. Uh, they can, they can kind of help you get through. Um, that's, uh, that's kind of what's been my, my safety net while providing any kind of rebates, any kind of cash back, um, which is, you know, the, the main thing which we're kind of working towards. Okay, and um, we're getting near the end of the uh, presentation or the panel. Um, any questions from the floor uh, regarding uh, bonuses, specifically in the sportsbook area? If anyone's got any questions, please let us know and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, okay, anyone like, like that, anything else? Uh, I can just add that uh, as time passing by and uh, seeing this industry 15 years ago today and trying to imagine how it will be in 5, 10 or 15 years, I can see that the market trying to standardize itself in a way and uh, the differences between different markets are getting uh, smaller and smaller. Uh, so I expect uh, this trend to continue and uh, what we've been discussing today, which makes total sense about the differences of different markets, I expect it's not going to be the same situation in the near future. I, I do see it's, it's a forever changing market. We're talking yesterday about different generations, Generation Z, X, uh, Millennials, etc. Um, obviously, the latest and the youngest in the market are all about the uh, influencers. They're easy to actually, you guide them to what they need to do by having a very good influencer or a brand ambassador on board. Whereas the older generation, such as myself, probably are more about the numbers. We want a number crunch. Hey, how are we going to make a return here? We're like using a poker mentality of, of getting these bonuses to see how it can work in our favor as a player. So the companies have got to probably do a lot of segmentation uh, from this point forward and in the future. And we've also got to be very careful offering bonuses, knowing the artificial intelligence, intelligence is around. Uh, people are going to be using that to see how they can um, break, uh, beat the bonus. So uh, it's going to be of interest in a few years to come. Okay. We've basically got only a few seconds left. So please do let me know if you've got any further questions. And um, thank you for coming. Yeah.